Podcast, me, Adam Hunter. We got the whole crew in town. Here we are. We got the Greg Wills. Hey. Uh, we got CB the Grenade. What up? We got Ween Dogs. What's going on, dude? And me. Listen, I want to thank Santa Cruz Medicinals. They help make potent lab tested CBD formulas. Their 1,000 milligram CBD infused coconut oil is amazing to add to your coffee, shakes, or use topically to reduce inflammation. You add it to your coffee all the time, Joe, right? Every single day, the CBD coconut oil. It's amazing. It's a, yeah, right? Yeah. And I used it actual, um, their olive oil to make a steak the other night. Me and my wife, we had cooking night. I put it on my steak. I felt so much better afterwards. I'm like, oh, this is great. And they, it's, 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 they got, it's potent and it helps with pain. And I'm in a lot of pain a lot of times. I've been doing Muay Thai. I'm 40 years old. My body is sore. And I use this stuff. And it helps tremendously. Awesome. So you can get it uh, at scmedicinals.com. That's scmedicinals.com. Use the code MMA Roasted for $5 off your order. And I'm telling you, it's gluten-free, it's sugar-free, it's lab-tested, and it's affordable. I'm telling you, listen, I put it in my coffee. I'm like, whoa. Where was this when I was in my 20s uh, or even 30s? Uh, 40, now all of a sudden everything's coming out. Uh, also, speedweed. California is legal in California. That makes no sense. Marijuana is legal in California. <laughs> yes, marijuana is legal in California, and you shouldn't have to leave your house to get it. No, they will deliver it to you. Look, you get a pizza delivered. You get Chinese food. Some people get escorts, okay? Don't get into your car, spend money in gas. Crazy people out there. You get to the dispensary. It's like a, it's a Walmart now. There's all kinds of people. It's annoying people. People you don't want to see. People are judging you while you're walking in there. The bud tenders are super hot. You might cheat on your wife. Who knows? Okay. Stay home. Order Speedweed. They have everything. They got the CBD. They got the marijuana. They got the, uh, they got THC sex lube. Me and my wife are finally using it. And I get high and she gets high and we're high during sex. Just a, a great time to have by, by everybody. They have edibles. They have marijuana beef jerky, marijuana honey, marijuana coffee. It's They got the vape pens with the flavors. Check it out. Go to speedweed.com. Follow them at speedweed. Mention roasted. You get $10 off orders of $100 or more. So, Greg, I've been hearing about this brawl that happened in your show. Have you really? You've been hearing about this? Well, from you. Oh, that's uh, right. Well, so, somebody else has just tweeted us saying, I hope Greg discusses the brawl that so happened. So, what? The show. Yeah, they were at the show. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. the fuck happened? And they were so excited because they're, you know, big MMA roasted fans. And what happened? Okay, so here's what happened. Okay, and I posted a video, but then the club asked me to take it down. So I'm going to do some mild editing of the video, and then I'm going to repost it. Right. Um, but essentially, I was four minutes into the set. Four minutes into the set. Right. And Were you headlining? I was headlining. Yes. Of course. Whatever I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. You can just put that question in your back pocket. Yes. Um, so the uh, so I'm out there four minutes into my set and I mean I am super crushing. I mean I'm I, I mean it's just it's a hot show. It's a hot show. The two people in front of me who are not you know my unfortunately I mean my my opener and my feature were not of course people that I booked the club booked them which is fine that's fine but they they just did okay. Right. Neither one of them really. Uh, I, to be honest, they're neither people I would ever book to. The, crow, the crowd people. was thirsty for laughs. But they were. So they had done well. I come out and immediately slam in. And we're talking four minutes in, though. I've done one and a half routines. Yes. Okay. When all of a sudden there was a girl. Okay. So they have this setup to where they have some seats that are lined up in front of tables. Okay. Yeah. So that they back up directly to tables. So I guess this girl was, uh, you know, she was being boisterous. She was laughing. She was applauding. She was really into it. And I guess in it, she somehow bumped the table behind her, spilling the drink of the person behind her onto this woman. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. But that woman lost her mind. She needed some speed weed. Yeah, she really did. I mean, she was like, and from what I'd heard, she had been like already in complainer move from the second she arrived. Right. You know? And so, you know, she and so she immediately started going, hey, what is wrong with you? You knocked my drinks all over me. And now everyone's like, what the fuck? I'm like, hey, it's okay. Everybody relax. Listen. And then her friend and her are both like, listen, sorry, we just spilled your drinks. You know, we'll, they'll, they'll get you new. And the waitress comes over and starts cleaning. She's like, no, that isn't good enough. 
else. You've been doing your blah, blah, blah. Uh, she starts just uh, fucking assaulting this, you know, verbally. White women? Uh, yes. Verbally attacking Shit, no, this other girl, you know, these two younger girls. So then those girls, so then this woman stands up. So then those girls stand up. And again, this is just, you it's know, one girl versus two girls. This isn't a perfect recollection. Obviously, this is just the way I recall it. Right. I'm sure they recall it very differently. But this is what happened is I recall watching it from the stage. And so then she stands up and, and then the girls stand up and now they're fucking facing each other. And then the guy, the boyfriends start jawing at each other. And now, you know, management's around, but then somebody shoved somebody. And so then the girls start fighting, you know, and so they break up the girls. Now the guys start yelling at each other and then they start fighting. Throwing punches. Yes. Yeah, so they start kind of, well, I don't know how many punches really got thrown before it got broken up, but it, I mean, yeah, somebody swung at somebody right. and there was pushing and one guy went down and you know, the audience, and of course now, I'm on stage with this and I'm repeating it. Okay, relax. Everybody relax. Everybody relax. Like this was not helping. And I'm saying it in an alarming way. I'm not like being, everybody relax. Right. I'm like, relax. Everybody relax. You know, like, I'm like, now, have you done any down. lines of Coke before the show? No Coke. Well, well I can't guarantee that. But All right. um, so, uh, so anyways, they, so I'm saying everybody relax. These people are going off. And you know, I'm like, do I leave the stage? Do I sit? So no. You can see me like for a second turn, like I'm going to leave them. Like I can't leave the stage. Why aren't you commentating this fight? So then I start kind of commenting. I'm like, come on, guys. You guys don't put, you know. I I ended up joking about that later, how I did, but I never really did a commentary, but I did joke about that later, about like, he gives her a laugh. She gives her a right. But, so I'm watching this. So then that kind of, they come in, they kind of break it up. They settle it all down. And they don't kick them out. No, they kick them all out. Okay. So I'm waiting for them to kick them out, you know. And I just stayed there on stage. I wrote it out. And then I was just like, okay, everybody relax. We're still going to have a great show. Don't worry, you know, whatever. And then someone in the back is like, just do another joke. And I'm like, yeah, let's get this party cracking. I start slamming my cymbal. The audience goes wild. And then I just start just riffing my brains out. And I probably riffed for the next... 30 minutes. Yes. Or mostly just talking about what had just happened. Yeah. I was like, really, it's my fault for being too funny. I drove her into an orgasmic, you know, body ching tingling thing of laughter. And that's what forced her, you know, to, to knock over the drinks. So we had this. And then people showed up late that didn't know what had happened. And uh. I was like, oh, OK, well, let me go back through it. And then we just recap it. And I was just talking about everybody in the crowd. So I just did massive amounts of crowd work and riffing for about 30 minutes. Then I think it closed with two jokes. It was incredible. I was Slamming beers, they were setting beers. I was chugging them on stage. Like we turned it. That into sounds this, great. We turned it into the wildest party you can imagine. A lot of comics couldn't and, do that. And that's what everyone was saying. They were like, "We were so lucky that it was you, Greg, because most guys would have just left the stage yeah. and wouldn't have been able to continue the show. Would have been weird the rest of the night." I turned it into this huge party and a huge standing ovation at the end with everybody screaming. And they were like, "No, do more, do more." It's like I can't do anymore because emotionally it was incredibly exhausting to ride that wave. Of course. And so, uh, but but so it ended with a huge standing ovation. And me walking off the stage to that so it was it was an incredible it was one of the wildest shows I seem to be a bit of a disaster artist I've, I've because seen, I handle these situations incredibly well I've had so many gigs like that where I did one gig where the guy wouldn't leave he was drunk and then all of a sudden like in Canada 15 cops show up to get him out Yeah. and then I'm like oh the male stripper showed up you know <laughs> and then the, right. they, they had to drag him out and he, he was came out fighting one I mean Peter Berman did some bar gig at some country western bar where three fights went on Every time someone heckled, the guy got up there and just knocked the person out. And, uh, yeah. Was and, uh, this the comic? <laughs> no, I was like, and then at the end of the show, I go to Pete, get the car going, let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Like, that's the last thing you ever hear after from the comic. Let's get out of here yeah. now. And then that's when you leave and you feel like you're being chased. Like you don't almost hear banjo music. Uh, I had the wedding video with the infant where the guy pushed me and we saw that one. Yeah, yeah. And then another one where some kid, a high school kid, I did an after school prom where somebody jumped on stage and wanted to fight me during the show. Like, I was like 20, and the kid got up, and I go, sit down, and then he did. He was some fucking drunk high school kid, was like, I'll fight you. I'm like, sit down. He's like, okay. So, so it's just like, yeah, that happens. It happens a lot, actually. It's fucking well, crazy. Well, here's the thing. The weekend Enough, didn't get finish its weirdness there. That was actually the start of the weirdness. <laughs> Because then we all, I got hammered with the crew afterwards with the staff. We were all just reminiscing. Because that was also their one year anniversary. Right. And the final show of their one year anniversary, they have their first fight. So 
Then, so we get hammered. We're doing tequila shots, whatever. And then I go back to my hotel. I eat way too much pizza that they made me and followed it up with a fucking uh, 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 Butterfinger ice cream bar, Ooh, those are the which best. then yeah. murders me through my sleep. Like, I mean, I'm just like, Ugh. okay. I get up at six in the morning to go to the airport and I arrive just in time for them to close the terminal because of a bomb threat. Uh, was they it, shut down the Was it the opener set from the night before? <laughs> but it was, <laughs> no, but they closed the whole thing so we couldn't leave. We also couldn't board, my flight got canceled. So I was trapped in the airport. They closed all the restaurants, all the stores, all the gates, uh, everything. So we're all just so trapped down by baggage. blow up, it's just you. It's right. not anybody selling an $8 sandwich. Right, yeah. So, we're, <laughs> so, we're, goes, so I'm constipated, hungover, and trapped in an airport for five fucking hours. Uh, okay? Then I finally get out of there. They move me my flight to the next day. So I end up going back to the owner of the club, Tom's house, and they were very nice. They let me just stay at their house for the day. I just watched football, passed out, get up in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, go back to the airport and I'm saying all I want is just a regular airport experience go with it I get there my flight's delayed two and a half hours no way and I'm like fucking fuck this town fuck this trip I just want to fucking go it's just a, a small flight you could have put drove to Arizona if you well at that point I could have driven back I could have rented a car and driven back but I hate the drive yeah so but that, so I ended up just getting on a flight to Burbank that was leaving at my time uh, and I went to Burbank and then my fiance went and picked up my bag after that so I mean it was just I mean it was just what it just got weirder and weirder and weirder and I'm just glad it's... But I mean, the show was fucking epic. All, all the shows were epic, but that was crazy epic. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Was there a mid-fight finger bang? There was no mid-fight finger bang. <laughs> I thought that I could see from the stage. I had a show. I saw... I, uh, what, what but I the guys that you were talking about that were at the show, they were like, can you sign the t-shirt mid-fight finger bang? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Jake and Tasha oh, for I coming love out people. to the show. They yeah, were really yeah. wonderful. Uh, yeah, I love those, that couple. I went to their wedding. Did you really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I was in Vegas anyway. They like invited me. I was like, I'll go. Of course. Yeah. It was awesome. Good um, for Jake, too, because Tosh is hot. Oh, man. And Jake's a nice guy. You could tell, you know, I mean, he's a super great guy. And I think he was a fighter or something. So, I mean, that's nice. But, man, Tasha's. She yeah. was the one that she, she actually, the first time I met them was also, it was in Scottsdale at, at the other club. And uh, and Tasha showed me her boobs for a free t-shirt. Wow. That's how we first met. Damn. So, is that what you they? think about every time you see her? Yes. They, well, they remind me every time I see her. They're like, remember I was with the show you my tits? And, uh, like, no. Years. Can you show me? Totally. I was like, do you want another free t-shirt? So, but they paid for this. <laughs> I guess now that they're married, yeah. they paid for this T-shirt. So. Um, yeah, so th Friday and Saturday hosted the HaHa, ha, yep. uh, and of course the, the owners out of town, so they threw up like 19 comics. Uh, I was there. I just got off yesterday, uh, but it was it was fun. The HaHa ha was fun. I just got it. off yesterday. It's a lot of fun. And then, but it's just so funny. Like this comedy just always reminds you. Like so, then Monday I did a dime bar. There's two people in the crowd, right? Oof. One guy that comes every single week and never laughs. It's like, and I even say the guy's on suicide. I love the guy, but I'm like, are you uh, like that depressed? Where you're like, oh, the only thing that can make me feel better is a comedy show where no one's. That. Right, it's right. just him, and then there's this like there's a black guy in a suit by himself, and I'm like, sir, uh, you know, are you are you okay? But I'm like, what do you do for a job? He's like, I'm an agent. I'm like, I'm like, great. He's the only one there. I'm like, it's one guy. I'm like, for who? He's like, CAA. I'm like, then why are you so depressed? He's like, because I see comedy every night. I was just like, yeah. That, I'm like, that makes total sense. Uh, so that was that was Monday. And then uh, last night was actually good. Dime was good last night. Good. I almost came by, man, but I was just so wiped out. It and was then, such a weird day. And then my baby pooped on me for the first time. Yay! Nice. Yeah. You're now officially a father. I actually made her feel better. I'm like, guys, pigging money for this. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so, Joe, how are you doing? Speaking did of, she, did she get the joke? Did she the did. She laughed. The joke? She's like, she thought it was yeah, she's like, Dad, you're disgusting. Um, how are you, Joe? I'm good, dude. Thanks for asking. Um, I'm not going to be able to follow Greg's story with any of my stuff okay I what's going on I, can i be honest man your relationship is ruining this show no it it's is. not no because before no, the weirdness with the tinder and all the bush and all the that shit. stuff yeah. right yeah. there was so much great shady goodness now oh no is we can't even make fun because she had brain surgery and, and they the don't have sex yeah and, but they're getting married like everything's gone i'm like i hate i hate this version of the week yeah what's yeah going it sucks on? wait your girl has hepatitis no, oh. well, the last one of the last girls that I was with before I got a girlfriend, you know, we that's the girl that like wanted me to put a gun to her head while I banged her, right? Yeah, but you actually bought a gun, right? A rifle? Yeah, I bought a gun. A uh, rifle? <laughs> How big is your dick? That you can get? <laughs> or is it so small you're that far away? You're like, I'm gonna need a fucking rifle for me. He did. He got a rifle, which shows you the gun problem in this country where he's allowed to get a rifle. Yeah, I mean, no kidding. Go on. So, the girl, that girl. 
the one that I banged, she put wanted me to put a gun to her head. Um, she called me like a couple months after, and she's like, "Yo, you wean dog, I got hepatitis, dude." I'm like, well, I don't even know what the fuck that so is. You got a tattoo, and she got hepatitis. Yeah, this is not. Wait, well, hold on. So you wait. So she. Okay, well, hepatitis B, hepatitis C. I don't know. She just said she got hepatitis. All of the above. Did you get tested for it? No. No, that's. I mean, I'm sure I would know if I had hepatitis. Maybe not. Yeah. I, mm, All right. So okay. So then. So ever since then, I've been really nervous of like just going out and banging any girl I meet off Tinder. Right. Well, I don't want to catch a disease, and I don't wear no condoms or anything like that. Right. That's mistake <laughs> number one. Two uh, and three. That's probably what you should. No. Yeah, that's one through nine. Uh, is not wearing condoms. Why don't you wear condoms? Is it the sensitivity issue? Because get over that shit. No, no. One, they always fall off or they get sucked up into the girl's vagina. I've had that happen multiple times. Well, are you going limp? What kind of piranha are you fucking? Do you have like one of those long pencil dicks? No, it's just... I don't. Oh Jesus! I don't buy my own condoms. I use the ones that people give to me. Like my mom got me condoms, and I just I just find random condoms laying all over the place. I just take them and Where? use them. Where are you? What like on Skid Row? Where are you? <laughs> Where no. are you hanging out that there are just condoms laying around on the street? I just find random condoms. What do you mean you find random condoms? And they're always like gigantic, like hula hoop size condoms. Like well, I can't you use out, this. Like locker rooms in the NBA. I'm like, well, I don't understand where. <laughs> why do you have random condoms everywhere? I mean. I I just mainly I've, I have condoms that I got when I was like twelve. And you still have like them? when you go you with your friends to the dollar them. store and buy condoms. <laughs> yeah. I just use those ones, but they're like gigantic condoms. They don't really fit. That's All how right. They wound up at the but, dollar okay, store. but you haven't um, had sex with your new girlfriend yet, right? I mean, we've like we've, we've done some blasting stuff. What that, yeah, she, oh, <laughs> fuck? Like power washing? What, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. That's right. He gets out that uh, power washer and he just has her bend over. <laughs> Dude, wait, what's wait, something? what's blasting stuff? You know, like finger blasting. Stuff, just what does the she basic do for stuff. You? Does she jerk you off? Does she use her mouth? What does she? What do you get? She's still finding it. You know, just yeah, yeah. She's no, go on. No, you don't. Yeah. 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 No more bad jokes. Yeah. All right, CB, you're in a timeout for that. Okay, so what? What, what, what she do likes, you get? What she likes to do is she likes to get me very excited and aroused, like in front of her parents. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Turning on Star Wars? Like what the? <laughs> what, do front, what do you mean in front of her parents? Like, <laughs> is she like jerking you off under the table while you're having family dinner? Some stuff like that, or like I'll be cooking with her mom, and then her mom will turn away, and then my girlfriend will come up and like rub her ass on my genitals, and I'll be like, "You gotta stop this," because now I'm like in overdrive mode. Once you yes. start that with the wean dog, it's all I'm like I'm focused on. Is yeah, like, of course. And now I always wear basketball shorts too, so I always gotta like be facing the other way when her mom is looking Why don't at you me. Carry a like, binder around. <laughs> I just, that's why I always have a pillow on my lap everywhere I go. I'm sure her mom's not figured that out. Right? <laughs> You're just standing in the kitchen holding a pillow over your dick. Because that's standard but protocol. Has she ever like jerked you off to com- completion or no? Yeah, that's it. That's it. All right. Thanks, CB. No one can see this. Yeah, I was going to say, right. thanks no, for the... It was, it was he did a great. visual ad. Right. He did a visual ad. Right. Right. entertainment. CB just podcast. stood up with a pillow. To, uh, he's an act out comp. Yeah, but, it's, all right, so... Greg's but <laughs> there's one thing I want everybody... I, I did enjoy it. Wait, has she ever jerked you off to completion or no? Um, unknowingly, yeah. What do you mean? What? What do you mean unknowingly? All these things that are real. Wait, what do you mean unknowingly? Like she doesn't know, but I know. Uh, she doesn't like How would feel she the, not know? She doesn't feel the, the sperm or anything. I get embarrassed and I like run away and I'm like, <laughs> don't, guys- <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right, fights. All right, so did anyone see the fights? What over the, the fuck? I was gonna call you. Were there fights over the weekend? Yes, I yeah. was consumed with the Canelo Triple G fight. All right, so. all right. A couple of different fights happened over the weekend. Mark Hunt. Lost, yep. uh, got submitted by. Were uh, any of these in the two major fight leagues? Uh, yes, yeah, in the UFC. UFC <laughs> had was, an event this week. It was in the morning. Pass, it was, oh, okay. Saturday morning. morning on Fight Pass. Oh, uh, that explains Russia. it. Okay, fight that Pass explains. From yeah, from Russia. All right, we'll t- makes we'll t- no t- sense going we'll up against about, that. We'll, we'll talk about a couple things. Uh, Terry on where. Lost and got dominated. I, that's the only fight I didn't see because I wasn't up yet. He got dominated. His his. Uh, that's but what then, I saw. But then he said afterwards, he's like, "I know I'm getting cut." He's like, "My wrestling is not good." I'm like, "Dude, stay off Twitter. People don't need to hear this. You know, you, you don't like if you get cut, you get cut. But don't don't put this. I know I'm getting cut on Twitter. Don't put don't put that out there. No, and and I will say I, I spoke to Ian and I spoke to Terry on at LFA a couple months ago, and Ian said, you know, the UFC kind of shafted him with the matchup because if you remember there was a 135 that dropped out of 227 in LA yeah. he wanted it and they're like no we're sending you to Russia bullshit to fight this listen, dude. listen he's 0-2 he's, he's in the UFC he's 0-4 0-4 it's not I, I love Ian but 
You fight who they give you. No, no, no. I know that. I know and that. And that guy but was we not. Had also and, dis- and he fought an unranked opponent. No, I know. We had also discussed though that you know Davalishvili is a is a good wrestler, and if they lose, it looks like they're gonna get cut. Yeah, which it looks like that might happen. And if it happens, it happens. I mean, look, he all he, he it was two fight of the nights he did. His fights are very exciting. He just uh, he his wrestling needs work, and then he, I think he broke his shoulder in the first round too. Yeah, uh, that doesn't shoulder. help. No. Uh, but I'm a big fan of Terry on, and he'll, he'll, he'll be back. He'll, he'll be back. Uh, so Arlovsky lost unanimous decision. Uh, I thought that was pretty. Um, the other guy landed a lot more. Jan Blakovich looked great against Krylov. He looked amazing. He looked amazing. Um, Mark Hunt was looking okay, mm-hmm. and then he got like just submitted. That fucking guy. That, what's that guy's like 60 Olay. years old or he something? Is. He's, he's old as hell. He's got like, didn't he sue the UFC? Didn't he? Yeah. Was he embroiled in a lawsuit with well, them? Yeah, because, uh, all, because they let Brock fight knowing that like he took steroids. Right. Uh, so no, he, Hunt, you're saying. Is yeah, Hunt did. Oh, right. okay. but, but now Hunt's been trolling Verdum on Instagram. Like, well, saying you got pop. All this stuff, but he wants, but Verdum's out for two years. What's the point of that? Well, and the thing it's is, a safe, safe troll with with Mark. <laughs> with Mark He's Hunt, practicing safe trolling. No, like that and safe also we're beat him. I think about, I'd say a year ago or so, when after the Brock thing and Mark had like three fights left on his contract. I think he has one now. He said, "I want to fight out as fast as possible and get the fuck out of this company." And like, I'm not saying that you know he he doesn't care and that's why he lost. But it doesn't look like the Mark Hunt that fought, you know, Roy Nelson a few years ago. And, you know, all these different guys that was looking like a world beater, future champion. Now he's got one fight left. and He's also a very streaky fighter. He's one of those guys that, like, loses three and wins four and loses five and wins... Big uh, in his head. A I'll lot tell you of who emotion. looked great was this kid Jordan Johnson, undefeated wrestler from Iowa. Went up against this guy Adam Yandia, another guy who was undefeated. And Jordan just destroyed him. I mean, destroyed the dude. Uh, so Jordan Johnson's the guy to watch. And then uh, Sumanov, uh, Tasumov beat Desmond Green. I think Green had a car accident. Yeah, when he, it was it was a couple weeks ago. And, and he there killed was three people, people in a people car murdered. accident. Yeah, so he's been really fucked up. So his I'm surprised on. he kept the fight. And the guy missed weight by six pounds, and they still let him fight. Second guy that Green's lost to where his opponent is missed weight by four. Hey, look. The last one was a ridiculous. New Michelle rule. Michelle Prezeres was ridiculous. They got to do it where if a guy misses weight by over three pounds, you get the win. And you get the guy's money, and you get your money. Yeah, because thirty percent isn't fight? anything. Yeah, he's still fighting. He lost. Second fight, he lost to a guy who had missed weight by five pounds or more. And you know, but 20- you're saying don't fight, don't. count it as a win, and give him the money. Yeah, that, yeah, that's easy from the fan perspective. Well, no, but like they give that's you the, not, that doesn't make good business. They oh. give you the twenty percent or thirty percent. But you still have a loss on your record, right? But they still need the fight on the card. They had 12, I don't they think, had fifteen fights. In this no, card. this card was very long. I don't think Desmond should have kept I mean, the fight after the accident. But you can't make it a rule. You can't just make that rule, or you end up losing big but fights. But why should it be an athletic you commission? You need them to thing. actually happen. It's an athletic commission thing. Unfortunately, it's not a UFC or you know. But any, why should any, Desmond Green fight a guy six pounds heavier? And if he doesn't fight, he, he doesn't get paid. Some and, guys and have he a, has to go to Russia to do it. Maybe it's declared a draw if he loses. So, like or he does no next, contest. Or no contest. Yeah, but, they, but that's what these, a lot of these fights are no contest or something. If a guy gets caught cheating, but everyone still considers it a loss. I think Even a lot of guys are super... Again, if they're willing to fight, I can see why they would let him fight because they need the fight on the card, you know? Yeah. I, and will, then, s- I will say the guy on the card that's looking at probably saying goodbye to is Cajun Johnson. Well, that S- thing he did to Dana White was so stupid. Well, plus the fact that he's the second or third biggest proponent and supporter of this new spearhead and... You know, he's he's sp- spoken against the UFC and against Dana. That's the like, union thing. Yeah, but he goes to da- Dana goes to shake his hand at the, at the weigh-ins, and he goes like this, and then he does that, does the thing where he goes like psych. Like that not- isn't exactly biting the hand that feeds you, but it's real it's fucking a, close. When you're in real bad, a real bad situation with the UFC, and you're you know suing against them for an, for a union, yeah, it's not probably not the greatest idea to go to your president. To snub and fucking, the fucking president of the corporate. Yeah, that's pretty like, dumb because yeah, he's gonna find himself just out. Yeah. I mean, it's the easiest thing in the world to be like, you know, yeah, we're just done with you then. How about that? Yeah. So, they did it. They did it with Leslie Smith. And then, uh, but I'll tell you, the worst fight, the worst refereeing I've ever seen, one of them I've ever seen Her was C.B. Dalloway mm-hmm. versus Khalid Murtazaliyev, where that CB just rolls, did, That rolls off the tongue, huh? C.B. was, I mean, he was getting the shit beaten out of him, lying on the ground, covering up. Letting this guy just punch him in the head. Flat on his stomach. Too. It was Flat like Brock Lesnar, Frank Mir, too, or Carwin, Frank Mir, where he's just literally right. pounding. And, and Herb right. is like, fight back, CB. Fight back. <laughs> like, 
I'm like, do you have money on CB or did yeah. he bang your? What the fuck is going on? Well, I mean, you know, sometimes they do it like, hey, you got to defend yourself. Is a common thing you hear them say. You yeah. know, you got to defend yourself. But this you got to defend like, yourself before was, calling it. Was, but if it's egregious, you let it go for what forty-five seconds. The yeah. last forty-five seconds of the round, and he's just getting punched in the face brutally. The commentators were like, "What are you doing, Herb Dean?" And everyone on Twitter was like, "What are you doing?" I mean, then he, but it was in Russia. So yeah, but that's please. A- if there's any place where you might be compromised, no, but it's but, but he was fighting a Russian in Russia. I know, it but I'm just saying. Move, I, I'm just saying. You don't think maybe he got a little note under the door at the hotel? Well, the Russian was winning. So that's what I'm saying. Like maybe they're like, make sure he fi- you know let him finish the round or something. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like anything over there. Yeah, but CB couldn't even get up. They actually the did finish the, the round. He finished the round. He could barely get up. He's looking around, going, "What happened to yeah. his corner?" That's and, a- the, and Herb was finally like, "All right, I guess I got to wave it off now." I mean, it was it no, was he a quit. mercy. He quit. Yeah, he quit on the stool. He, he, he was like, yeah, even, I'm done. Yeah. He couldn't sit on the stool to begin with. That's what I'm saying. So clearly they were like, no, we want to see this kid make it to three rounds or whatever. And so, you know, I just, I'm sorry. You get over to Russia and shit's a different world. I understand. I don't care who that you kid, are. Maybe you're right. CB Dalloway, if there's anybody that should probably just call it, I'd say him. I mean, when he gets knocked out, he gets knocked yeah, out. Yeah, I was at the fight with Hector Lombard. That was like- I think there's one place you should not have anything. It's Russia. <laughs> Like so they will, they will just blatantly fuck with the results. I wouldn't be surprised if it came from Putin himself. Oh come on! D- no, seriously, yo, you come on. This is the world that we live in, man. He's two and three in his last. It's run five. by oligarchs. Yeah, but, that, the, yeah but the fight with Hector Lombard. I no, two count and that, four. I wouldn't count that as a win. The Hector fight when he punched him after the bell. Oh, the illegal punch. That was just a very strange fight. Yeah. Um, now, other news. So Johnny Hendricks is doing bare knuckle boxing against Brennan Ward. Which, if this was 10 years ago, I'd be all for it. Johnny Hendricks has looked terrible in his last, like, six fights. And I love Johnny Hendricks. I'm a Hendricks fan. But he peaked out in those GSP fights or those Robbie Lawler fights where he looked great. Those were wars. But since then, I mean, he lost to Kelvin. He lost to this one. against The, the last one against Barracuda, however he fought. or that. Oh, but yeah, like well, he's fighting a heavyweight at middleweight pretty much. But, but. yeah, which is... But give it a good... I mean, Johnny, you were like a three-time national champion. You were a god in wrestling. I think you were a five-time state champion. But isn't it clear? Isn't it clear that when they make this move, it's for either love or money? Either they just love fighting still and they just want to fight, or they just need a fucking check. he's made so much money and he lives in Oklahoma where rent's like 20 bucks a month. Who knows what happens with that money? You know, it's so easy to fucking blow through money, brother. I I I think this is the new fad fad that everybody wants to say they were in when it grassrooted. Yeah, but they're not going to be able to say it because they're going to have drool. No, I know. And the the weird thing is, is like, Hendrix has been retired for months now. Brennan Ward retired like three days ago. And Brennan Ward hits so fucking hard. Brennan Ward hits very, And now you take it away the rest. If you need a element. check, if you need a check, I think take Brennan the check. needs it way more but than fucking. There are other Hendrix ways does. to get checks. Dude, How grappling. much could they cost, possibly be paying in the bare knuckle I think boxing. they are paying a lot. Yeah, I think there's yeah. a lot of money. That's the only way to attract right them. That's how they're getting actual, which is smart. That's how you do it. But man. There's a lot of investment. So yeah, they and so they're looking at going. Hey, I got to get a check while I still can. They see the end of the road. They see a couple more che- paychecks on it. They're like, I'm taking these checks. Yeah, but it's not even boxing. It's bare knuckle boxing. And yeah, it's, man, and no. it's guys that were not that great at boxing to begin with. And, and and I don't know, man. I love Johnny Hendricks. I'm a fan. I'm, I'm a friend with Johnny Hendricks. I know. We, I, we hung out with him in Vegas. He's the sweetest, nicest, best guy in the universe. He dips a lot. It's I, just not necessary. I don't want to see him get fucking the shit kicked out of him in bare knuckle boxing right now. Who's yeah. he boxing? Brennan Ward. Brennan from Ward, this fucking guy. A, knock, a knockout artist. Oh, no. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Knockout artist. <laughs> to me, he either needs the check or he just loves fighting. And maybe he just loves fighting. I know, you know? He, had, I know he had like a restaurant, Big Rick Steakhouse, which yeah. I guess he ate all he the steaks. He shut it down. Yeah. It went, it, listen, but that's the thing. If that thing goes down, guess how much money he just lost? All of it, brother. Restaurants are such a risky investment. And so many people go and put their money into it. You, you know, that's why most people are, it's a group of investors so that you're Exposure is very limited because restaurants are are, are a huge gamble. I know. I like, I'm all for so bare knuckle overhead. boxing, but I I like it for like people like on the come up or or I don't know. I don't. I just Johnny Hendricks. You did so much. 
mean, mean you were a national, national girl, champion. Though, you know, I mean, when you see a turnaround story like that, what, it makes Rowdy it, Beck? Yeah, I think it makes it. I mean, she got on the cover of fucking the sports page of USA Today for for that. I mean, that's the biggest piece of press she'd ever had in her entire career. Yeah, but and I think when other people see that, they're like, hey, there's opportunity over here. Let's go over here because it I could get be. why they do it. I just with Rowdy Beck, I think it's a little different because she's never taken beatings in the octagon. Like, I mean, she's lost fights. She got kicked in the face by Paige Van Zandt. Yada, yada, yada. She's never been. But, like, Johnny Hendricks has just been in fucking wars. I mean, wars. Yeah. His, his, Two Lawlers, one GSP. I and, mean. I, just to, and so, yeah, yeah I don't want to see it. But he's got, I'm going to watch it. I'm Because it's on it's on the Baroni Lieben card. Oh, it's the nice. same card as yeah. Lieben? Oh, oh man. Okay. Wait, wait, I want to come over and watch this. Because I'm not paying for it. Well, I'll come to your house and watch it. <laughs> yeah. This is better than that. What was I mean, the we're fucking, starting to get close the, now. The should be over roasted Robin. road trip from two years ago for, what was it, Tank Abbott and Dan Severn? Like, oh, yeah. yeah do you remember that a few years ago? We were going to go on an MMA roasted road trip because Tank Abbott was fighting, like, Don Fry or I had some a dream about. I had a dream oh, about yeah, Severn. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. This, this bare-knuckle boxing is like the... That all Where over. is it? Can we go? It's in Wyoming. No, yeah, we're not going. They can't fucking <laughs> sanction Guess that what? Shit. I could come two blocks away to your house and watch it on your TV. I think that's what I'm going to do. Dude. I was trying to think of a good joke for the Hendrix one. Bare knuckle boxing. Like, maybe because he like, ate his gloves. Or I'm just, I couldn't think of I couldn't, I couldn't think I just of hope it's the old, I just hope it's the old school <laughs> Hendrix that's showing, that's, you know, throwing shovel punches and just getting crazy. Because the Matt Brown fight, the wrestling, the wrestle fucking, and like, Hendrix needs to come back into BKB and come back in form. I love this BKB over here. Listen to this kid. BKB. He's already throwing out the acronyms. Well, that's what it's called. Well, it's, know, it's, it's bare knuckle body, but I mean, it's not so around that everyone's like, yeah, BKB. It's not, right? <laughs> it's not like UFC. UFC is, you know, yeah, is, is, knows. is ubiquitous at this point. You know, but 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 BKB, <laughs> it sounds like a new it sounds like a new burger at Burger King. Yeah, I can't wait though. I, or the I'm, new B2K, like yeah, new boy band. Exactly, it's a new big boy. I'm telling you, BKB. Though, I'm telling you, we should do bare knuckle MMA. We'll, we'll fucking we'll just follow the bare knuckle boxing thing, but we'll go even further. And that'll be our organization. Now, can we Stand touch up? on the Triple G Canelo fight? Can we talk about? I know it means fighting. I saw. Fighting. I saw I a little bit. I saw some of it. I oh my god! I, I saw that. I thought Canelo won. That's the Canelo did win. Yeah. And and but I mean, it was a great fight. And I mean, what it's and boxing has been so bad for so long, and especially when those two clowns fought to a draw in the first one, which was made you feel like this is why people don't watch boxing; well, the they first watch one, MMA. Triple G won. You know, and that's right. Triple G did win that first fight, but then with a draw. And it's funny because I was picking Triple G in this one again, but I was talking with Jonathan Gregory, who goes by Creepy John. I know him. The I comedian. Like that guy. Great guy, great guy. But he's a former professional boxer whose other job is training boxers. Yeah. And he was saying everybody in professional boxing says it's going to be Canelo in a decision, and goddamn if they weren't right. Yeah, no. He, he, and as a Latino, as a Mexicano, I was very excited. I know. It's just, it's just hard to get behind Canelo after those, like, Two steroid failed tests. You know, it's. Yeah, hard. he said it was in the beef. And if you're in Mexico, that doesn't surprise me. Really? Hey, listen, they ain't got the USDA so why down is, there. Why like is we every other here. Mexican boxer not testing positive? Maybe because they're not eating that beef. Really? I don't know, man. And it was I'm something making else. excuses from a champ. What, what about uh, Maypac 2? Uh, well. It's coming. I mean, is that coming? Is that happening? I'm, That's happening, I'm yeah. in December. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is happening. Is it sponsored by AARP? Is there- <laughs> They're also talking about another Conor Mayweather boxing match. I mean, that's fine. Connor gave him a heck of a fight for seven rounds. Come but, on. And, 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 but it did seem like Mayweather was letting him take his shots for like six rounds. And then the seventh, he was like, okay, have you, had an, have you enjoyed yourself? Yeah. Have we made our money? All right, now I'm going to take you out. I just don't know if like, it's like Mayweather almost like, what the fuck do you have to fight for? Because he's probably, he, he, spends, he gambles so much money away. Oh, I know, but it's like, what? what is the point? You came out of retirement for Connor, now you're coming out of retirement for Pac, Pacquiao because Pacquiao got a knockout last like month or so, and then they're it talking was... about Connor again. I mean, the Connor one's huge money. Connor one's big business. May Pac 2 to me is not that big of a deal. It's still going to be big here, business. I, 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 it's it's still going to sell out. It's going to be huge, but yeah, personally, it, I'm I like, mean... eh, whatever. Yeah, but and, it, and also, it's a fight he knows he's going to win. But then they get really? me every time with those countdown specials. I'm like, I'm not watching it. And then I watch those 24-7. <laughs> right. They get Schreiber. caught up in it. They, they're good. They and edit those things real good. By man. like they two minutes. And it could be anybody. It could be yeah. like 
Stephen Hawking fighting Brock Lesnar, and then <laughs> within two minutes, I'm like, Dude, Hawking I think has a shot. I'm like, I was gonna say, and then Hawking wins by disqualification. I'm like, Hawking's pretty smart. I think he's got this. Like, uh, <laughs> he's, he's a smart fighter. Game plan. Yeah, that happens every time. All right, so we're calling Angela Lee right now, who is an undefeated fighter, one FC champion, youngest world champion in the history of world champions. Oh. Is she roommates with Andrea Lee? No. Or is that Andy New? No, this is Angela Lee. Uh-oh. Angela Lee. Hello? Hey, uh, can you hear me? What, what am I, hello? Hi, hello? can you hear me? Hello? This should be. Hello? Hello? Angela Lee? Hello? Yes, Adam? Yes, this is. is Adam. How are you doing? Awesome. Very good. Good, good, good. And now, all right, are you in, where? Are you in Singapore right now? No, I'm in Hawaii, actually. Nice, nice. How is it going over there? It's going great, man. Um, you know, just finished up a training session over here, so feeling good. Nice. And then I, I saw you on TV the other night. You were on To Tell the Truth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I flew over there a while ago, and I guess they're just airing it now. I, that, and now, uh, did a lot of people see you on that and like uh, talk to you about that? I got some mentions. I mean, I didn't even know that they played it, honestly. Um, and then people just started tagging me in it, and I was like, oh, cool, it's out. Yeah, my, no, my, my, uh, my, my dad told me. He's like, you, you know about this undefeated fighter? Uh, for, uh, uh, for, and Eliza Schlesinger couldn't figure out who she was. And, <laughs> and then I, I was like... That's so awesome. Yeah, I was like, what's her name? And then I go, yeah, I think her name is Lee. I'm like, she's on my podcast this week. He's like, ask her about it. I'm like, okay, I will. So... Uh, <laughs> But um, <laughs> that's so sweet, man. So I was actually I was doing the research about you. First of all, your your fights are awesome. If you don't know this girl, she's nine and zero. She's the youngest world champion ever. History of world champions. You are the youngest. You were what? <laughs> you were twenty years old when you won the world championship. Um, nineteen. Wow. N- nineteen years old. Uh, and then I I was reaching you. So you grew up. Your dad is Chinese. Your mom's Korean. Uh, which they even get along. That's amazing in itself uh, because <laughs> th- there's, some, there's some history there. Uh, then you, you, uh, you grew up in uh, Vancouver, Canada. Yep, that's right. And then you moved to Hawaii at seven. Why did you move to Hawaii? Um, you know, I don't know. Like my parents, they, they met in high school over here and they figured, you know, it's a great place to raise a family and we loved it. I mean, um, the warm weather and all that. So it was, it was a great fit for the family. Yeah, and then I, I, I was reading that your father is a black belt, your brother's a professional fighter, and your two other siblings are all fighters. Are you guys the toughest family in the history of fighting? What, what the hell's going on? <laughs> um, you know, it's just something that we, we all grew up doing together, and it's kind of something that's kept us real close, you know? So um, every day, everyone does their own things, but, you know, when it's time to train, everyone's on the mats, and it's, it's real nice, you know? We get to stay, stay connected like that through martial arts. Does, does your mom train too? Yeah, you know, to believe it or not, you know, even though she works and she helps out with the kids' classes over here, like that's always been like a passion of hers. So she'll be helping out with the little kids and, and my brother and I help teach other classes. So it's it's cool. That is really cool. Now, and I also read that you were the world pancreation champion in high school. Uh, for uh, people out there, what is pancreation and how do you become a world champion? All right, so pancreation is kind of like Uh, It goes back all the way to uh, Greece, you know, it was actually in the Olympic Games and I'd say it's pretty much like MMA, Um, you know, got striking, takedowns, grappling, all that. Um, And when I was 16 and 17, my brother and I flew all the way to Greece, actually. Um, We competed in Sparta and represented Team USA and it was just an amazing experience. That's actually what motivated me to continue this career path after high school because I just got to travel and, and, you know, compete and see all these amazing experiences. Now, when you say striking, is it, is it slapping or is it uh, fists? Oh, it's fists, man. It's, it's, yeah, it's hardcore. It's like, um, nice. that's what I'm saying. It's like how MMA was back in the day. Wow. So you did that. And then when you're 17 years old, one FC offers you a, a contract right away. Um, So after I graduated high school, I actually had three amateur fights here in Hawaii. And uh, then we were looking for, you know, a a bigger promotion to get into. And my dad had connections with some of the matchmakers and, and, you know, business people in one championship. And that's kind of how um, I got through there. So we sent them 
my tapes of my fights and and they said yeah okay let's do it and they signed me so i was so stoked to be able to you know have a professional fight on on a stage like one championship at just 19 years old that's crazy and then you were also on the wrestling team in high school and you were the state champ of hawaii yeah that's right um you know my junior year um i went in and i i never really did like wrestling before I, I just trained like mixed martial arts and and so I, when i found out all you had to do was pin them for for like 10 seconds on their shoulders i was like this is the funnest thing ever you know <laughs> <laughs> so now now when you win the states of hawaii did you wrestle boys or girls um girls so in hawaii we actually have a really competitive uh girls wrestling um girls wrestling program did you go to uh did you compete in the uh, nationals too for wrestling no, so um, some of my coaches asked me, you know, um, a lot of people from Hawaii are going to go up to the Nationals, Fargo, and compete, and um, I wanted to pursue my MMA career. Which was crazy, because I was, I was watching your fights last night. One fight, you did a lateral drop on a girl that was, it was a beautiful <laughs> arch. Whole, it, it was like a WWE. Like, you know how they do lateral, you get behind them and they just toss people? It, it was, you know, <sighs> you, know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That was that was a that was a fun fight, man. You know, it's it's always each fight is so different, and you go in there and you kind of have a plan, and sometimes things change, and right in the moment you see, um, you see the you see the opportunity. So, yeah, that was a fun one. <laughs> and then another one of your fights uh, was on a football field. Yes. Oh, that was amazing. You know, I'd love to come back home and, and be able to fight in in Hawaii again. Um, that was at the Aloha Stadium for. For my last amateur fight in Hawaii, and um, you know, I've been telling one championship they're working on getting a U.S. TV deal, and I was like, oh man, well the first place you gotta go, you gotta go to Hawaii. <laughs> oh man, and that was awesome. And then the, but then I also saw that, so kicks to the head are allowed in one FC. Um, so knees to the head, yeah, totally legal. Um, and they used to be able to have like uh, kicks to a down opponent, but now they took out that that uh, rule. Cause I saw you. You were just kneeing the fuck out of some girl's back of her head. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean it's close to the back of the head. It's like right if it's touching like by the ear behind the head. Like if it's still touching kind of by the ear, then it's all right. I mean like total back of the head's not allowed. And then you uh, you had a submission there. You had a twister that was insane. Uh, and then you, your last fight, you did a standing anaconda, uh, which I I mean basically you snapped down to an anaconda and then just threw her on her head. I've never seen an anaconda. <laughs> that was pretty, you, have you been working on that? Thank you. Um, you know, yeah, like, uh, I guess submissions is one of the things I'm most passionate about because there's so many different ways you can, you can finish your opponent. And um, yeah, anaconda is definitely one of my favorite moves. Um, I'm always hitting it in the gym. And so to be able to pull that off in a live fight, I, I was super ecstatic about it. It was insane. It was, it was awesome. Uh, now, I saw you at the MMA Awards. I introduced myself. Everything was great. Then you met Russell Peters, and you told us uh, both of us that you were engaged, which I'm married, but he started crying. Um, and then, <laughs> and then I saw your you you and your boyfriend. You guys were making out in the corner, and uh, I thought it was. I was like, first I was like, what is going on? And then I remember that you're both 21, 22, and that's what you do. Uh, who, who is this guy? How did he get so lucky? Um, so his name is Bruno Pucci. We just had our wedding actually July 18th. Congratulations. In Congratulations. And um, <laughs> thank you. So I actually met him. Um, we we're training partners in Evolve um, in Singapore. And, you know, we we're training with each other for a couple of years. And, and you know, we really hit it off. And, yeah, I mean, it's, it's awesome to have someone in your life that knows exactly kind of what you go through I mean especially with having an MMA career you know it's it, it's difficult to be with someone like that you know and we know the struggles that we go through so it's just he's the best support system now your your, your brother lost his last fight by illegal suplex like what the hell happened there oh honestly man like I have no clue um that we were, uh, it's super upsetting because that's something that should have never even happened. Um, I think there's some clarification that needs to be made on the rules um, regarding, you know, 
takedowns and suplexes because they said that he, you know, was disqualified for an illegal spike or a like, but that wasn't a spike at all. You know, if anyone who knows wrestling and the terminology, he didn't spike him. Um, you know, he had his arm trapped and he did a nice takedown. Um, you know, should have been an awesome win though. The referee didn't stop the takedown and he let Christian pound him out, which should have been a TKO. And so we're actually in the middle of trying to fight that right now. I don't know. I think you should keep it because losing by illegal suplex is pretty damn cool, actually. I've never, I've, <laughs> I've never heard of anybody losing that way before. And I'm like, fuck it. It, it looks way more badass. Yeah, it was a beautiful takedown, man. Completely legal. Like anyone who, who, who fights or you know, knows wrestling, that's, that's a total legal takedown. Now, now, now I've got, got to say, so you're, you went from 105, now you're 115. I think you would do really well in the UFC – how long more is your contract in 1FC? Have you ever thought about going over to the UFC, or are you going to stay there? Uh, I still have a few more fights in one championship. And actually, yeah, my next fight will be for the weight division up. Um, even though one championship calls it atom weight, the actual weight limit is from 105 to 115. But the thing that makes it so difficult to compete at that level is because they don't allow you to dehydrate. So they're going to check your your um your water levels on the week of the fight and um you have to pass this hydration test and that's why you have to just diet down to that weight that's why it's been so hard for me um and so fighting at you know 15 to 25 the next weight division um you know i'm super excited about that having more strength and and having a healthier camp but how, now how do you think you would do against the girls in the ufc because i think you would do really well oh thank you um you know i would always you know, that's something that I would totally be open to, you know, one championship. I, I got a lot of um, work to do in, in this, the rest of the division still. There's still a lot of goals that I want to accomplish. But UFC, you know, being in, raised in America and the States, that's always something that I've been drawn to. You know, I've been to Vegas multiple times, see UFC fights, and, and a lot of my friends are in the UFC as well. So, hey, maybe, maybe later on down the road, that's something we could possibly do. I'd love to do that, man. Greg, you have any questions for the beautiful, undefeated Angela Lee? Uh, yeah. What's uh, your favorite color? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. A real question? No, I, I mean, it sounds like you're on an amazing track. I mean, she's 9-0. and oh. uh, Wean Dog, CB, anything for these? Mm. Come on. You gotta, this, is hard, this is a hard interview to get. Trust me on this one. This, is, this, is a, this girl's royalty. In Hawaii, she's like the Michael Jordan of, of Hawaii. Oh, my favorite part of this interview, by the way, is when you were like, why would you move when you're seven to Hawaii? And I'm like, pretty sure her parents Her parents moved. You know what I meant, that fuckhead. That was so silly. Like, uh, she, you know, like I, she meant, I meant why did they move. Okay. Any questions for the beautiful Angela Lee? Uh, I got a question. This is Ween Dog. Yes, uh, go on. What's your question? <laughs> Uh, are you falling down a flight of stairs right now? I know. It sounds like she's getting beat up right Angela, now. Angela, is everything okay? Pots and pans. <laughs> hey, Adam. Um, I'm sorry. You're cutting in and out, man. It's kind of oh. hard to hear you. Oh, it's okay. What's your question, Wean Dog? So I'm, I, have, I have a bang date with my girlfriend. A bang date. Okay, so him and his girlfriend. Okay, so <laughs> Wean Dog has a girlfriend. They haven't had sex yet. She's a virgin. Yes, what's your question? So my bang date is in March. We're going to bang in March. But is there any way that I can somehow seduce her to bang her before then? How would he get a girl? How would he get his girl to have sex with him before March? <laughs> oh, man, you just got a rope. Like, sweep her off her feet, man. Do all the kind of romantic stuff that you hear about in the books, like... I, I, sw I swear it works like a charm. <laughs> yes. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks so, for that so amazing March question. It is. All right. So uh, now it got moved back to April. All right. So, <laughs> well, listen, Angela Lee, uh, don't forget us when you're huge. You're already huge. Now, are you famous in Singapore? Like, are, are people like, are there posters of you in Singapore? Um, I'd say Singapore, yeah, it's it's pretty big over there, especially because, um, you know, that's where my dad's from, and so I try to, I try to you know, hold that flag up high. Um, a lot of support from there and Hawaii as well, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, it just seems, it seems like, I'm telling you, I was like, I didn't even know you spoke English. I swear to God, like, until I met I you. I was like, because you're so promoted so heavy over there that I had no mm -hmm. idea. But I honestly think, I, I know you're going to be a huge star over here. I know it. I know it, I know it, I know it. Uh, Thank I, you, I appreciate that. And and uh, you and Ben Askren, and then what's his name, the other... Uh, Jiu-Jitsu guy that we Gary have, Tonin. Gary Tonin. I mean, they got some. Yeah. They got some legitimate talent over there in One FC, and there's a lot of more guys as well too, and girls. But uh, I'm a big fan of yours. 
Thank you for being on the podcast. Have a great upcoming week, and uh, God bless. Thank you. Appreciate it. Take care. All right. That was Angela Lee. I love Hawaiians. Just fun people. Well, she's technically Canadian. Yeah, but but it seems like she's Hawaiian to me. She's got to be the, you know, she probably has the best tan tan of any Canadian in in the world. (laughs) That's true. Her brother's the one that's the champ too, right? Is there? No, he lost his... Maybe it's... I keep confusing the two. Right. But it could be any any win and No, yeah, that's no, not no, no. Some, and a Yeah, no, but her uh but she's a bad I mean what a f- family of fighters. You know, they got four kids, two of them are pro fighters. That seems to happen quite a bit though, like when the dad is already involved in fighting that he trains the kids mm-hmm. and it's kind of like his way of staying involved is training the kids so the kids learn it. It seems to be kind of common, you know. We look at Wonder Boy, you know, his oh, yeah. family's look a bunch of Gracies. fighters and the Gracies. I mean, I mean you that do... shit ain't never it's going to be like 3024 and they're going to be like, you know, so and so Gracie stepping up yeah. for his UFC yeah. debut. It... It's true. My 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 wrestling team got a lot. Of, we actually we have like 25 kids now. Bunch of eighth graders came in who were just badass. One kid from who knows jujitsu, that he's like, "Hey man, um, what's uh, illegal here? Can I choke?" I'm like, "You can't." Ch-. I'm like, "You can't choke." Don't choke in your match. But he's great though. The kid's yeah. actually he's great. He's really really. What about that one like uh, Khabib kid? Oh, he's he's down too. He's, he's still kid, he's still there. He's still there. Good, yeah, good. yeah, Akman. And then uh, is he still undefeated? Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. No, he lost once, but then he avenged it and beat him in the tournament. Good. Well, I, I did Muay Thai last week, uh, a couple on Monday, and I'm going. And Jamie's a great coach, Kilstein, and and uh, it's a good class. And this guy, where's this class? It's right over here. I'm like Wilshire, oh, and okay. like and like it's a five star MMA. But this guy is his first day in Muay Thai, and then they're like at the end, they're like, okay, we're going light sparring, and we, I mean like five percent <laughs> sparring. <laughs> But of course, of this course, guy, he wants to go. This guy, yeah, I've heard this though. I've heard yeah. this. So this guy, of course, is like, uh, you know, we're just, I'm, and he's wild. I mean, just right. And it's and like, if I really wanted to pick him apart, I could, you know, like because he's. Then why didn't you? Well, I did. Okay. But, but I was going. I was hitting him like at like one percent. Right. And he's like, you could hit me harder, man. Hit me harder. And I was like, no, no, I'm not gonna hit. You. But that also means that when you hit him harder, he's gonna think. Right, that's what I he wants. He wants permission to hit you harder. Yeah, and of course, yeah. but he's got no headgear, no mouthpiece. I'm not gonna go fucking knock somebody out in my Muay Thai class. But then he hits me hard, and then of course I'm blocking 99 percent of it. But the one time he got through, and then Jamie's like, hey, take it down. Uh, otherwise, Adam's gonna hit you back hard as well. And he's like, that's okay. And then he's like, no. And then I'm gonna hit you hard too. <laughs> like, I mean, th- that's the problem with people off the street. They just think that like this is a fight club. The gym is the, it, this is the place to show up. But he also doesn't realize he's so up. fucking wide yeah. that if I really wanted to beat the like knock him out, he'd be knocked out. It would be it would be a bloodbath. Yeah. But I'm not doing that because that's not what I'm paying for. I'm not. And I'm, right. I'm, you just want to train. Of course. It, yeah. it happens a lot. Like. I'll try to keep it short, but my, my artist, my business partner, he does jiu-jitsu. He's a high-level jiu-jitsu player. And this guy, this cop off the street who decided to join the gym one day went in and started rolling with guys his side, but he's hurting them. And he's, like, you know, torquing the arm bars, everything that you shouldn't be doing in a jiu-jitsu school. And my artist, he's about 6'2", 300 pounds. He's not a small dude. And the jiu-jitsu coach, who's a, this little Brazilian dude, he tells him in Portuguese, roll with him. And he says, quebra em bracho, which means break it, like break the arm. Oh. And then, so my, my artist gets in, gets the arm bar, starts cranking it. The guy's tapping and he goes, like, don't let, the, the instructor says, don't let it go. And the guy gets up and goes, what the fuck are you doing? He goes, you went hard with all my little guys. What, you can't beat the fat guy? Yeah, but you don't tell a guy to break a guy's arm. He's not, like- he didn't actually break it, but like, don't go easy when he's beating people up. It's funny, I was showing some of the videos of me with the kids, and someone's like, you remind me of the guy from the new Karate Kid? <laughs> Who's <laughs> from the old Karate Kid? Yeah, yeah, did you watch it on YouTube, Red? I haven't watched it yet. It is the greatest thing on television oh, Kai? in the past it's 10 awesome. years. Yeah, but you gotta pay for YouTube Red. No, they no, give no, no, no. no. I thought it was no, Netflix. They, no, it's the YouTube Rabbit. They trick you. They give you the free trial, and then it expires after the season's over. But then they're, they're, they're like the new one's coming out. It's the only thing I watch on YouTube Red is a Cobra Kai. I think I already canceled you. Like I, I think I already did the free I trial. I watched it for free it. though. I never, really? I never signed up for a free trial or anything. I'm, I, uh, yeah, it's I don't worth know. it though. It was, it's really. Uh, I'm excited. You for You watch the, the new Norm season. show? No. But it, I haven't heard anything good about it. <laughs> 
I was waiting for something. The only thing I've heard is everything bad. Apparently, he just keeps stepping in shit. And that's the thing. I mean, we're such art apologists now. We have to apologize for everything. He had to apology, apologize for his apology. <laughs> he kept saying He that. said something. He was like, boy, you'd have to have Down syndrome to say that. And then they're like, you can't say that. And he's like, I apologize to Down syndrome people. Like, It's like, oh, my God. Like, you just... It's almost like you're just born in wrong, in wrong. You're in the wrong time. Now. I love it. I love, you know, I, and he's I, so funny though, man. You know I think funny? so too. I like Norm Macdonald a lot, but I mean, I haven't heard anything good about the show. So the show, I did. look, the show is, is good, but it, it's essentially a podcast. Yeah, you, you know, it's just him hanging out with David Spade and somebody else's, and just. It's a podcast. Like yeah, and his sidekick is Adam <laughs> Egan, the fucking the Booker from the Comedy Store. The Booker, like all those comedians around, and you chose the Booker? Not that he doesn't have persona. I mean, the guy's a charismatic guy, but it's like all these comics, and you chose the Booker? Like, how bad do you want spots? That you. Then you're like, I'm going to make, uh, you know what? The Booker, you're my sidekick on this show. So can I get some spots on Friday's and Saturday? Yeah, it's like, like the only show ever where a comedian got paid in performances. Oh, yeah, instead yeah, of no. like cash. It, it, I like Norm. I mean, I was, actually, I went down like a Norm hole on YouTube when he went on like the, uh, the uh, when he <laughs> when went you on. When you were the, in your teens, you trying to figure out if you were gay or straight. When he went on like The View and then like. He's like promoting his TV show, and he's like, "So uh, Bill Clinton's a murderer." <laughs> like he says that on the View, and they're like, "What?" He does that. That's what he does. He yeah. just jumps out of there. And I've met with, the, I've worked with the guy. We had him on comics at least years ago, and he's a really nice guy and really super funny guy. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, comedy when you grow up in the age of uncensored comedy, and then it evolves into the age of incredibly censored comedy. The worst. It, it's like you don't even know how to exist. I know. You know, like I wanted to make a joke earlier, and I was afraid that I was going to get attacked for making a joke to a young girl about, you know, her, you know, whatever, making out with the dude and all this, and so I just skipped it. You know, so many jokes in my, my come through my mind now that I'm like, dude, Skip I was, it. it's I not was, worth the controversy. Dude, I was going through my old ambush stand up stuff, and I'm, yeah. just, I'm putting it on YouTube and stuff, and putting it on Twitter. Yeah. Actually, I've gotten like ten meetings out of it since I did that. That's good. So and some whatever. Uh, some interest? Yeah. Good. But I was looking at some of your stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't even put this on about like your Asian joke. No one wants to fucking Asian, dude. Like, yeah. I'm like, I'm not even going to put that out there. Yeah. It's funny, but I'm like, eh, it's going to get you in trouble. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to get you it's in like, trouble. I know. So much of my old work I can't do anymore. But I do feel like sometimes. I, mean, I do it anyway. I don't but really, I do like. Know, when in I the do live it, show, I'll do it. In the live show, I feel like people appreciate it more. Yeah, it's almost like, you know, okay, it's live, you know, but you put it in media and people feel the need to be like, no, no, you know, and it's like, ah, oh, forget it. Yeah. No, somebody was heckling me and, and then uh, I put the heckler video and someone's like, well, let's see, like, you attacked the crowd first. Uh, do you any, um, that's called uh, comedy, you like, They were like, do you any um, self reflection on this? I'm like, self I'm like, what? Are you my therapist? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So everyone what? gets to be a fucking critic, even though they don't try. They don't do shit. They just sit back and criticize. Like, they have nothing else to do with their life, and they all have a fucking voice now. Listen, people, we want to look good, all right? Listen, uh, we all want to look good. I want to look good. CB wants to look good. Joe wants to look good. It's very important to have a good-looking face. And have you ever looked at a photo of yourself from five years ago and think, man, I look so young. What happened to that guy? Where did all these wrinkles come from? When did I start looking like my dad? Yeah, that's happened to me actually a couple times. I look at myself like, damn, this is not good. No bueno. How does my wife still stay with me? Well, listen, some things get better with age. Wine, for example, or a nice single malt scotch. Yeah, that's, that gets better with age, all right? However, it's not the case when it comes to your skin and your face, especially your face. And most guys don't do nearly enough for their skin, despite all it does for them. Soap and water are not enough to prevent aging, guys, okay? Not enough. But there is something you can do for the fight against aging and it's staring you right in the face, and that's forhims.com. It's a one-stop shop for skincare, hair loss, sexual wellness for men. Listen, I use this stuff and it is awesome, awesome. Anti-aging kit is a custom prescription cream tailored to your skin that can keep your skin looking youthfully smooth by reducing the appearance of wrinkles and fine lines. My dog loves it, I'm telling you. Listen guys, it takes seconds to apply. And it's the same treatment celebrities use to help keep their faces looking so long. Yeah, you ever look at a celebrity and be like, oh man, I wish I looked like that. Well, now you can, it's your skin. Do you wanna be a face in the crowd or the face in the crowd? Order now and save 20 bucks off your first month for of the Hims Anti-Aging Kit. Lock in those looks now and get your first month or anti-aging anti for just $20 off. 
So go to forhims.com slash roasted S C. That's F O R H I M S dot com slash roasted S C. Forhims.com slash roasted S C. How's your comedy for going, Joe? It's uh could be better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does comedy sometimes. Walking, oh my god, I, I'm so walking sorry. comedian. I thought you were <laughs> I thought you were. Just have, you, have you been getting up at all? Dog. Yeah, not Kill as much him. as I should. Um, it's just when you do so much open mics, you get depressed. Yeah. Or at least right. I do. I don't, don't know what don't it know. is. Yeah. It's just like, because you don't have that acknowledgement from a real crowd. You're just yeah. like with depressed and negative attitude, other open micer dudes. And it's like, dude, this kind of sucks. You know what I'm saying? I get mad at the dime when comics bring their notes on stage. Yeah. Like, I get like. Well, you have to. Here's the thing, though. You have to tell them. It's not a workout. Show. Every time that I tell a comic, "Don't bring your notes on stage," they go, "They go, I was no, I wasn't planning on doing that. Are you kidding me?" But the notes are in their hands, right? And, as they're walking to the stage. No, and, you, like, but you got to tell them in advance. You gotta I let know, them know, but listen, then, it's not a workout advance, show. I'm like trying this. to build a great show because people, because comics, especially when you're booking pros, you're, you know, they see a bar show as a workout opportunity. I know. You know? I know. Now, for you, Ween Dog, let me give you, let me help you out. Okay. okay? Here's how you get above this. Mm-hmm. Okay. What you got to do is you got to start producing your own monthly show at a bar. Yeah. Just like what he now he's doing two times a week that is entirely too much starting out Mm -hmm. he knows what he's doing he's done this for years Mm -hmm. you need to do it once a month find a bar where you can put together a show you book adam you book me just a couple guys to actually do the weight the heavy lifting and you you go to college and then you go to a college yeah or go to your college and set it up your college then bring in some comics and that way you get at least one real show what you do is the other guys that you book on the show are guys that run other bar shows and you make sure you understand they understand your trading spots you go hey you want to trade spots if you put me on your show that's what then I'll I tell put you on every every comic that asks me for advice that's the advice I give them I don't Absolutely. give them I don't give them stand up comedy advice because I'm like we're a long way from that I go you need stage time best way to do it is to run your own show create right? your own show but otherwise you gotta, you're stuck just chasing over mic time which isn't real stage time mm-hmm. it is a dress rehearsal that's all it is it could actually make you worse I think and it so, actually can because you end up mimicking the bad habits of the other open micers and you, you need and to also, be around better comics and you, and you do it by producing up, your own show and the jokes that work are like Inside rape jokes or something that like the regular crowd is gonna be like, no, this is terrible. Well, like, that's the thing. Open micers, the comics laugh at what's not funny and don't laugh at what is funny. Yeah. So you can't trust the response you're getting from these jack offs anyway. Mm-hmm. So what you got to do because they're all bitter and they're all afraid that you're getting one joke ahead of them. It's like, listen, none of you are going anywhere anytime soon. So <laughs> and really the truth is, one out of you is gonna become a real comedian. The rest of you are gonna become nothing. Mm-hmm. So what you so you need to just produce your own show. That way you have something to work on, something to look forward to, and something that helps you book other traded out spots in other places. Now keep in mind when you do your own show it's, you're not going to enjoy it. It's a ton of work. It's a pain in the ass. You are don't think anybody's going to bring any audience. Nobody's going to it's all on you. Yeah. But then for that show one you get to perform for a real crowd maybe practice your hosting skills and hopefully get three or four other regular spots at real shows out of it in exchange. Yeah. And that's how you climb out of it. Thank you Greg. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the advice. The Comedy Institute.com. Now let's talk about the fight this Saturday. Saturday. This fight, Saturday night, UFC Brazil. Yes. Do you, know, you know about that, Greg? Yes, of course. That, really? Did you see yeah. the last minute change? Uh, yeah, oh, Eric Anders, right? Yeah, your boy. Yeah, he's my, he really is my boy. He's my friend. So, all right, Alex Chambers, who is this hot astro girl, astrophysicist, had a rough run in the UFC uh, so far, but super sweet, hot, cute, is fighting Lavina Souza, the Brazilian gangster, 11 and 1. This looks like uh, might be a rough night for Alex. Who is this girl, Lavina Souza? Lavina Hanata Souza is a former Invicta champion. She lost her belt after defending a bunch of times to Angela Hill. We were at that fight. Right. And um, just super tough Brazilian chick, good everywhere, very talented. I think that, well, I know this is her UFC debut, and I think it's going to be a walk in the park for Olivia Souza. But I hope Astro Girl pulls it off. We'll see. Talos Latis versus Hector Lombard. Talos Latis is just like, he must be 75. I remember. This I was going to say, what is, year is this? This is his retirement fight. <laughs> really? Yeah. Win or, I, win or lose or just he's going to get retired? Win, win or lose. And when I saw Hector at Bellator a couple months ago. Yeah. Uh, he looks more than ready, man. I think Hector's going to take his hand I hope. Off. That's what What's the Name says who, who fought Hector. Uh, my man. Um, the, Anthony Smith. Anthony Smith. I love it when we have Hector on the show and he's like, hey, how are you? I like the gold. I beat him up. I put him down. He can't fight with me. Hey, hey. 
It's like, if you want to laugh, listen to the last Hector Lombard about C.B. Dalloway oh a- after that fight. He screamed for like 20 Were you there? It was the funniest yeah. interview I've ever done with Hector Lombard. Just look up the, the last The guy's Hector a character. Lombard. The guy is a world-class character. Oh I love him. Oh, my God. <laughs> he is the funniest. Also, uh, Jillian Robertson, the savage from Canada. You know her? Yeah, she was on Tough. She's the redhead that was on... Um, it's pretty cute. Yeah, a few seasons ago. Not not super promising on the show, but, you know, it's, it's a probably, different circumstance. Mero Bueno Silva, you know her? Oh, fucking no. All right, Sergio Morass, the Panther against Ben Saunders. Ben Saunders, we gotta go back for again. Ben. It's, it's ben Saunders, ben back Saunders. again. You were here when he was there with Cleo, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a wild one. There's one thing Saunders <laughs> needs to do to win this fight. What's that? And that's literally... Take down defense. Take down defense. Take down defense. Take down defense. If he can keep it on the feet, he can stay at range against Sergio Marias. Marias is a little dude. He's short. But he's he a wrestler. That's what I'm saying. So if he can defend the takedown, keep it at range, Saunders will win this fight. Random Marcos. Love Random Marcos uh, from Iraq and Canada. Uh, she's freaking fighting Marina Rodriguez. Just jumping up the card there a little bit. Just uh, <laughs> skipped all the Fox skipped Sports Skipped just prelims. a couple of our uh, other fights. Uh, sorry, okay. Right, all right, 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 no, no, it's fine. I, all right, Chase, it's not like I know these guys. I'm Chase, just like, where right, did we go? Chase Sherman, Christ. who's hilarious on Twitter, who's also been on our podcast, the Vanilla gr- uh, Gorilla. Oh, yeah. The Vanilla on, Gorilla. I love that guy. Like yeah, it. he's funny. He's yeah. taking on Augusto Sakai. Who's this guy? Sakai only has one loss. It's a split decision loss to Czech Congo and Bellator. Um, he was on Dana White's Contender Series Brazil, which I guess was last month. And the guy has one loss and one draw, but Chase is a tough dude, too. I think it's a good fight. Yeah, but Chase either wins or loses by or, knockout. Yeah. He'll... Uh, Ryan Spann versus Luis Enrique. We are, I know Spann from, uh, he was on looking for a fight also, right? Is Enrique, is this Frankenstein? No. Why Evan Dunham black versus and Ronaldo. White. Those are some big dudes. This uh, is Evan Dunham's retirement fight as well. He there said, we go. Are, Evan Dunham versus Francisco Trinaldo. There's a fight for you. He, he, said, Trinaldo. Uh, he said no matter what. I got what, Trinaldo on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Dunham said no matter what, he's retiring. That's, but, that's not a good sign. No, but Masar on Did you guys see the NFL linebacker that retired at halftime really? of the game? Yes. Why? Monte Davis, who's a very respectable linebacker, a big name he got because he was playing for the Bills and the Bills are getting butt fucked up and down the field uh, this season. They have no quarterback. They have one guy who's who threw quarterback. five. They, well, that's the thing is they got rid of Terod Taylor, who's now doing great in Cleveland, for Nathan Peterman, a guy famous for throwing five interceptions in the one game he played last year, came out and threw four interceptions in the first half of the first game this year. So then they put in their rookie, Josh Allen, who uh, he's a rookie. He's throw, He's got talent. Who's the guy that looks like Conor McGregor? What's that? Who's the guy that looks like Conor McGregor now? That's uh, uh, Fitzpatrick. Ryan Fitzpatrick down in Tampa Bay. He's been on the Jets right he used to be on the jets used to be on uh uh also on on the houston uh texans right. and he's one of those guys that when he only is filling in for somebody he's amazing but when you make him the starter he blows yeah there's a lot of guys like that i feel like uh, and so but this guy went in the locker room at halftime put on his street clothes and walked out of the shower walked out of the showers put on street clothes and looked at the rest of the team the rest of the team was preparing for the second half of the game and he looks at the rest of them and was like I retired y'all and fucking walked out and went home gangster dude dude I was just like I'm, I'm that like, like this, that's like an eastbound and down move Remember totally he, that's he, the he, craziest shit I've ever heard of and this is a veteran did that, did former he for the all game? pro fucking life yeah <laughs> they docked his pay half a game remember well, that's like when uh, remember when Tyson was fighting Andrew Galata and uh, you had to pay by the... At that point, Tice was beating everybody so bad. It was after jail, though. But you were paying by the round. Yeah. So it was like $10 a round or something. And then it, if it was more than five rounds, it was like 50 bucks for the rest of the fight. And... Um, at the fourth round, he quit and like ran out of the he ran out of the ring. Yeah, and like went back. He broke like half of his orbital bone. Like later, like you could understand why he did that. Right. But my dad's like, I'm not paying for that next round. <laughs> <laughs> my dad called up the fucking. But he's like, I'm not paying that ten dollars. <laughs> Had a principal. Jeez. It's like that one that boxing fight a few weeks ago. Where they went to ring the bell and the dude did his whole entrance and then oh. literally climbed through the ropes and just walked. You see out. that? No, that was on Fox Sports. The fucking weirdest got, shit they, I've they, ever they seen. They go, all right, life. touch gloves, and he gets out and just walks and w- leaves. He said he said that to like prove a point or, uh, that he wasn't getting paid. They're like, all right, are you ready? Are you ready? And he's like, 
fuck it. And he climbs through the ropes and literally <laughs> leaves. And there are 10,000 people in this fucking arena going, what, what just the fuck happened? I actually, yeah. I actually wrote, like, when you meet an internet, an internet troll meets a guy in yeah, real life. Yeah, like when something. you get catfish. Well, you know, the the, the world's the most, the most famous, of course, is No Mas, No Mas. Roberto Duran versus Sugar yeah, Ray Leonard. Yeah, that was a little different, though. Where he, nobody, like, quit in the middle of the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like, No Mas, No Mas. Well, no, according thank to you, him, I'm though, done. according to him, which I kind of believe him for some reason, because he was, he was, you know, you know about Duran, like, like, legends are that, like, he knocked out a horse one time. That, no, yeah, like, he was called Hands of Stone. That yeah. somebody, like, raped his sister, so he took him to the top of a building and threw him off, took him down, well, picked him up. This is what Freddie Roach told me. This is what, this is what, this is what, this is what Freddie Rose told me. Freddie Rose told me all this stuff, yeah. personally. I believe it. But he, according to him, you know, he beat Leonard the first time, and the second time, Leonard was dancing around, and he's like, if this fucking guy's not going to fight me, I'm out. So the no mas was actually like, fuck this shit. I, I'm, I'm a fucking man. This guy wants to run. Which I could kind of see where that would, why, but at the same time, that's not, you're still losing the fight. Yeah. You have to win. All right, so the rest of the car. Random Marcos uh, versus Marina Rodriguez. Uh, Burrell versus Ewell. We had Ewell on the podcast a couple weeks ago, remember? He was a guy that, um, good guy. He was like filing for unemployment at the bank or something and was like had nothing going for him and then he got the call to fight Burrell. And he was almost homeless. And I'm like, man, they're really looking for someone to fucking... Burrow to beat. They're looking for homeless say, people. Yeah. They need, they need, but he might win. He's actually to... really good. Hey, desperation can be a real motivator. Sam Alvey versus uh, Smiling Sam. Little Nog. That, that, oh. that fight's over right now. Noguera's out cold right now thinking about it. You think so? Oh, yeah. I think, uh, at, especially at 205. Alvey's normally a 185er. Yeah, 205. but Alvey sometimes loses to fights, I think. I, just, win I don't and... see it any other way other than Noguera. It's in Brazil, out. though. No, they don't I, test in Brazil. Is that a they need to shot? test him for intelligence. Uh, Eric Anders versus Thiago Santos. My your boy is gonna win. I got. I got. Uh, Come on, man. Fucking, I was He's so a, much happier when it was Manua and Santos. Uh, yeah. Or before when it was Manua. And I don't Glover. know, man. Your boy. Your boy is gonna Anders win. Anders is a tough dude, man. This is a great fight, but it's at two hundred five, and both of them fight twenty pounds under. Really? Yes. So who do you like? The guy was an Alabama running back. I don't know. I can't pick. Two time. Anders was? Anders. Yeah, uh, I can't ooh. pick. Two time NCAA uh, Pro Bowl, whatever that is. What's it? Division. Uh, All American. Uh, no, All American, but when national title. They won okay, the, national title. Alabama. They, yeah. they need to try he was on the team? Yeah. Oh, he didn't play. Yeah, he did. Eric Anders played. He played briefly. They did a countdown for him. I, I was about ago. to say, it must he be one of those things where they just put him in at the end or something. No, he was good. He was legitimately didn't good. Didn't he get to the NFL? Then it didn't he got work to the out. CFL and, and then uh, then almost made the out. NFL. I was going to say, because I'm pretty familiar with Alabama running backs, and I don't remember. Or maybe, or maybe he wasn't a running back. I don't, no, I don't think he was a running back. I think he was a defensive back. Oh, okay. That would be yeah. a little bit different because I know he was a, he was a big backs. boy. He wasn't, yeah. he wasn't touching the ball. Maybe he wasn't a running back. Well, they have big running backs. I mean, we no, look but at he was, I remember he was either a linebacker or a defensive tackle, one of them. But he played. Yeah, he, 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 played. Like, and he legit was good. And by the way, we have to listen to Tyron Woodley's new rap song. Oh, Jesus Christ. Can oh, I can't in? wait. Come on. Stay for, like, just stay for the rap song. How we going, brother? Take it easy. Uh, hog some to all you Jews. Hello, this is Pearl. Hey, Pearl Gonzalez. It's Adam Hunter. You're on the MMA Roasted Podcast. Hey, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm amazing. Thank you for asking. Oh, well, thank you for responding. I'm here with uh, the Greg Wilson uh -huh. and Ween Dog. So Pearl, I got to say, I didn't know that much about you. Uh, and then I looked you up last night and looked at your history. Wow, you've had some life. Some life. Uh, and it is an honor to be talking to you. Wow. Well, thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. No it's problem. It's an honor to be on your show. Thank you guys for having me. No worries. Uh, first of all, because I, 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 I like knew you as the girl that uh, almost couldn't fight because of the breast implants uh, in the UFC. Uh -huh. That was when I first, actually, and I was like, this is ridiculous. Uh, this is not how you should be knowing somebody. Uh, and, then I, <laughs> right. and then I watched your fights at Invicta, and I, and I follow you on Instagram, and some of your videos are very... Uh, uh, sexy, very sexy videos, uh, yeah. especially the last yeah. one when you were jumping on a bed and oh, your I boobs like were flopping yep. everywhere. Uh, no, I was dancing. I wasn't jumping. I was uh, dancing on the bed. Yeah, you were dancing by yourself on a bed and you had a little crop top and my, my, and then my wife started yelling at me going, what are you looking at? And I just threw the phone <laughs> into the into the bathtub. <laughs> but, <laughs> but now that I actually did some research on you, holy fuck. All right, so let's get this whole thing straight because I, I want my listeners to know how awesome of a person you are. All right, you were born in Chicago, 
Both your parents were on drugs, drug, drug addicts, right? Correct. Correct. Now, it was a crack, heroin. I mean, was it hardcore drugs? Absolutely. Uh, my father shot heroin and my mom smoked crack. Wow. See, mom's wow. a crackhead and your, and your dad shot heroin, right? So then, exactly. uh, so you're then 11 years old, your dad gets clean. And, or or six, six years old, dad gets clean. The siblings go with the mom and you go with the dad. So they broke up the whole family. Yeah, well, yes, my sisters, well, each of my sisters, we all went to different family members. Um, originally, I went with my grandma, and then my dad got clean, and my dad took me at nine. Nine, nine. Now, now at 11 years old, he, your dad's looking at you, and he's like, my kid's getting in trouble, hanging out with the wrong people. I'm sending her to an MMA gym or a karate gym. Puts you right into this gym, and at first, you, were, you don't want to be there. Next thing you know, you're fucking up everyone in, in, in the uh, gym. So it was MMA, and at that time it was called NHB, No Holds Barred. Yeah. Um, and I did everything. Like, I was with one of the, like, original, like, you know, founders that helped really create MMA. So, uh, yes, I was getting banging already at 11. I was in, you know, I was just really grown and, like, you know, getting in trouble a lot. He put me in the gym. Um, I did not like it at first. And then after a couple months, I realized, like, this is where you put all your energy. You know, this is where I take my anger out. I was always a really mad and mean kid. So, uh, yeah. And then I, I had my first competition, actually, in San Diego um, for a tournament that Ken Shamrock was doing. A uh, pancreation tournament. And it was Team USA versus Team Canada. Wow. Well, now, you said you were gangbanging at 11? Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Wow. So, like, gangs take in 11 year old girls? Yeah, and especially if you look older. I looked a lot older than 11 years old. I acted a lot older. I was smoking cigarettes at nine. Hot. I mean, uh, that's not good. That's terrible. That's I got my first tattoo at 11, actually. Whoa. Wow. I mean, yeah. I mean, what did it say Barney? I mean, what was it? <laughs> what kind of tattoo do you get at 11? Uh, so my first tattoo was actually my best friend's initial, and it was supposed to be a heart. But the homies did the tattoo with the homie machine gun that you make from, like, you remember those, like, motor yeah. uh, cars? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The motor, the motor cars, remote control cars. And so they would make machines, tattoo machines with those motors. And, yeah, that's uh, how they do it yeah, in jail. So I got my first tattoo like that. Just, it was supposed to be a heart, but it was, like, shooting a little bit because we fucked up a couple times. And the A looked more like a triangle. Right. And, yeah, that was my first tattoo. Wow. So then, now, then you're getting older, and uh, then you have to, you have to then take care of your 16 year old sister. Like now, all of a sudden, you're a parent. Yes. Wow. Now, how how come that happened? Um, I was about 19, and so we were during during this time. Uh, we we we. Uh, I went to a group home. I was. I got arrested a lot. I fought a lot. So I was constantly getting arrested for fighting. I had went to jail even as a juvenile in Wisconsin for like three weeks. Um, and then put on house arrest in Chicago for that. That was somewhere in there. But wow. my sister and I were put in group homes. And my dad ended up taking me out. My sister stood. So she was like, she was bad too. She was already, she was the same thing. Gang banging. She's like 12 years old, 11 years old. She's three years younger than me. Um, and she just, she wasn't doing well. So she got kicked out of the group home. Uh, grandma was like getting fed up with her. She wasn't going to school. She wasn't doing, you know, she wasn't listening to grandma. And so my grandma was ready to kick her out. I mean, at this point, my grandma's raised her children and us, and especially my sisters, my bet sister. Um, and so anyways, yeah, so I, I was, um, 19. I got my own place. I was like, I, you know, got this cute little place. It was super ghetto, but it was mine, and uh, I took her in, and I was determined to get her through high school. You know, she wasn't doing well, and that was very important to me that she got through high school to set herself up so that she could do something with her life. Wow, um, wow, on. that's amazing. This is like a Lifetime movie. This really is an incredible story. Time, yeah, times, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> t- times like 20. <laughs> but then you get married, right? So you get married at like 20 to a heroin addict. 18. 18. You're yeah. married to a guy... And he's stealing from people. He's stealing heroin. He's stealing all kinds of shit. And you're riding the getaway car. Uh, and, and you're telling him, don't do this. Don't do this. But he's like, fuck you, yada, yada. He gets arrested uh-huh. and you get thrown in jail for two weeks. 
Yes, I get charged with a class X felony that that automatically carries six to 30 years. It's like the worst Oy. class you can get in a felony. So it was a very serious crime. Um, and the bond was like 200000 You have to come up with uh, 10% of that cash. So now I'm like begging my dad to get me out and he's trying to figure out a way to get 20 grand to get me out of jail. But he did. He found 20 grand. How did he get 20 grand? He put the house up, I believe. He put, he put his house up. He did something. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he, he took out a mortgage. Like wow. See, so he, so he, he bails you out. Now when you get out, do you get divorced immediately? Is, is your ex still in jail? or? No. So I wasn't even married when this happened. I got married. I married this dude after that. How crazy is that? Uh, so you marry the guy after he put, he you go to jail with him. You're like after this. this. You're like this is the guy yeah. I want to spend the rest of my life with. And then at what point do you do you look at this guy and say, you know what? Probably not the best choice. So it wasn't so much that I thought he was the best guy. I was determined to change him. You know, he was a a drug addict. I, I was aware of it at this time. My parents were drug addicts. Like. I wanted to change people, you know what I mean? Yeah, and so I, I was him. determined to change him. That's why I stood with that right. dude. Um, and, uh, yeah, he finally, like, you know, it was just he was stealing from me. I was on working. Uh, he would steal the rent, you know, stole all my gold, like, stole from my family. And so um, I was just in this really toxic relationship that I was not, I couldn't get out of. I was 18, 19 now. He's 29, 30 older um was, and it, was it mayhem miller then yes <laughs> huh was it was the guy's name mayhem miller was that his name no, <laughs> no. Oh. Oh, my. and so yeah so finally he goes to jail so he goes to jail for stealing urns at the cemetery oh, oh. my and god what was yeah. he what was he yeah. why was he doing so, that can you sell that i don't know i guess you can empty them and, yeah, re and resell was, them was, it was like silver or metal or whatever, and he'd go, get, he'd go recycle that, and he'd get a lot of money for it. Wow. And so he would go, and that's how he was, he was getting his drugs. And so finally, at this point, I realized, like, um, my aunt stepped in. Actually, my aunt was, I was, I didn't know what to do, to be quite honest. I was lost, miserable, like, miserable. You know, I had went to school at 17, right out of um, high school. I went and did, like, the medical assistant program. I wanted to become an RN, do something like that. Um, obviously, now it's all shot because of my record. So I'm lost. My aunt steps in, who has been away for 22 years. She was a model. She was in the, you know, do you remember the song, I Want to Sex You Up? Oh, yeah. yeah Color, Color Me, me bad. bad. Yeah. My aunt's in that video. Oh, wow. wow. Did, did, she's hot. Did they sex her up? Yes. <laughs> yes. In office. The main, like, the main singer dude. And All so, right. um, she, like, stepped in, you know. That guy's and, a fat uh, crackhead now. I miss fighting then. My dad, it was just like a coincidence how my dad actually call, uh, called the gym he spoke with my old coach, and then now my dad was always begging me to go back to fighting, and I never went back. And he called me, and this was like, he's like, please try, go back, just, you know, and I was 21 now. So I was like, okay, cool, I'll try it, Dad. So he paid for, like, my first, um, he paid for my first, uh, like, three months or something, and I stepped in the gym, and I never looked back. No, I mean, and it's amazing what, what you've accomplished. I mean, because you, you won your first, like, six fights in a row. Then they throw you in the UFC against Cynthia Cavillo. You finally get in there, and then all of a sudden, they're like, well, she has implants. She can't fight. Now everyone's staring at your tits. Now, at this point, were you mm -hmm. like, oh, God, this is ridiculous? Or were you like, I've had enough shit in my life. This is not going to bother me. You know, I was, uh, I was embarrassed, absolutely. Um... I was embarrassed, and I was also, you know, I, I love being in the lights. I love, I, I've always dreamed of being a superstar, and so I was like, fuck, this sucks. But, like, I was, like, almost taken, taken back, like, holy shit, this, is, this can happen. Like, I can really become a superstar, you know? It was like, I felt my dreams more than ever, and I think it freaked me out. Um, you know, just all the media that came through with that. And I, I was determined to get to the fight. I was determined to fight. But I think that, you know, a lot of that media and, and that whole situation took a lot of energy from me and yeah, of course. just was not able to perform that night. Well, Cynthia said perform. that she felt your boobs during the fight and they felt really good, by the way. So we had Did her on the, she? Yeah, we had her on the show. We asked about them. She said they, were, they felt great. So, <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, now, now then, okay, so then the UFC, you have another fight against a, a stud girl, doesn't go your way. But now you get back into Invicta and you've been murdering people. You won three fights in a row. 
and I feel like, do you think maybe you were rushed a little bit too fast to the UFC? No, no, I was definitely, it was, it was a good time. I think that um, I did not, uh, re- my reaction to being in the UFC and, and my image of myself did not change. And I should have, you know, it, it, it required change to be, to, to compete against the best in the world. Your whole mindset has to change completely. Completely, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I, I failed there. That's where um, I failed and fell short. Well, some of those fights, though, you had coming up were an explode fighting series, which I don't know. Like, I'm not saying your fights because you obviously had great fights. You fought Courtney Casey. You have a win over her who's doing really well. But it seems like explode fighting championship. Uh, they take homeless people. And then they have them fight real people, uh, real fighters, and it doesn't really go well with the homeless people. Uh, <laughs> you mean like Sage Northcutt's first fight? Yeah, the, the, one of them was like a, a soccer mom fought like a, it was. It's crazy. Like you look at the records, one guy's like one in sixty, and he's fighting a nine and zero All American wrestler who just uh, like. Am, am I right? Some of those fights are a little fishy. Not saying your fights were. I but. mean, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> but but the soccer mom that was my teammate Alima. So. Oh, okay, not Alima. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was okay. But but yeah, wasn't it kind of but wasn't yeah. it kind of strange? I um <laughs> I fought for explode once. Okay. And um it was, you know, just I I needed to compete, I needed to get the work in, I needed um the training camp. Um and yeah, maybe the the fights aren't the best. Yeah. Um, but I, I still had a hard training camp and trained really hard for that and put yeah. my body through a lot. So no, it's, it's not um, your it was f- a great experience, and that's what I needed. It's, it's not your fault. It just seems like some of those fights, some of the other fights. Now, uh, I also read that you, you came into the, um, into the gym. You were 165. Now you're fighting at 115. Wow. Uh, so you lost 50 pounds. Uh, was, that, was that hard to do? <laughs> yeah, it took, it took me a couple years, actually. You know, I think... I've always been down to train, and the physical part is easy to me. Uh, it was the discipline of the diet and the water and um, that, that, like, made it longer. But it took me a good, like, you know, four years to get down. And uh, I would say that today I have the most athletic body that I've ever had. Speaking um, of, okay, yeah. So it's taken this long, 10 years, 11 years. Speaking of which, your Instagram, by the way, Greg, I don't know if you look at this girl's Instagram. So, um... Pearl, I gotta say, you're you have a lot of really uh, fun pictures on Instagram, um, right? Uh, fun. Yeah, yeah. Where you're like, yeah. like this one, like you're the, the last one, you're showing your butt, and then uh, Ooh, quality, and then like <laughs> you're, you're, I, don't, I don't know what you're looking at, but it looks like a, a lot of fun. This one, you're staring at a wall. <laughs> Uh, you're against the wall in a bikini. I'll tell you what, that wall is awfully lucky. For, for some That's reason. It's a lucky-ass wall. Uh, you seem like you're having a lot of fun. But then I read that your boyfriend, you have a husband in, the, in like the Navy. Is that what, is that? Uh-huh. Is that, is that, now does he, does he get upset that like you're, that everyone, how come he's never in any of the, any of the pictures? Uh, or he does, is. If you, if you scroll down, you'll see some of his pictures. He, he lives in another country. Oh. And so, um, yes, he's stationed in Japan. Um, and he's been there for 10 months now. Uh, that, and uh, so that's why he's not in any of my pictures uh, now. Uh, tell but him, he loves it. Uh, tell him thank he you for his it. service. Tell him thank you for the service. And this is what she weighs in. Look, look, look at the things she weighs. Now, how did this guy get you? What, what was his, because uh, it seems like you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not an easy cookie. Uh, but a, a lot of our fans would probably like to date a girl like you. What's, what, was, uh, what was so good about him? Good about who? Your your husband. Like, how did he? Uh, My husband. Yeah. Um. How did? Hmm, so okay. I am. Uh, I'm actually not that cool. <laughs> so I like. I dig like soup. I read books, and I'm really chill. I don't. I don't. I go out and I get wild. You know, once in a while. But for the most part, I'm pretty chill. So to me, what's important is a good conversation. Right. If, and most people don't have good conversations. So yeah, we're fine. Um, that was definitely it. The dimples. You know what I mean? Like. The body, I'm mean, those kind of things. <laughs> nothing, nothing too much. So where did you guys meet? We met in Chicago. Oh, uh, so you've been you've been with this guy for a while. Y- yes, uh, eight years. Eight. Okay. Oh, wow. okay. Oh, good. Good there for you. you. So he's probably away, and he's probably showing all his other soldiers, "Hey, this is my wife. Look at her." And they're like, "Oh, you're a lucky guy," and that whole thing, right? <laughs> I think so. Look, I mean, I don't, Greg, know. Look at her I don't dance. know what he does, to be quite honest. This is how she oh, celebrated I'm looking at it. So her, her, her last win. She's, she's in a t-shirt. She's dancing on the bed. Uh, and then you're in a hat. 
Um, and uh, everyone's super hot. Yes, it's this guy's having so much fun too. By the way, this guy. Now who's who's filming this? My aunt. Oh, that's oh. that's weird. The all right. entourage. No, so no, aunt, that's that's my aunt, the entourage. That's my aunt. I told you that. Oh, the aunt that She's was in the call me bad. Day one. Right. Got it. Yes. Yes. She okay. has been. So I have a team of women Oof. that help me with my the business side of of me, and um, they're all beautiful women. I got my cousin Jackie. Like you see her on my stuff too. She's just a hottie. Um, my aunt's a hottie. Like so. Yes, yeah, she filmed it for me. All absolutely. Right. And she was like, you know, she's like a cheerleader too. She helping me uh, get it. <laughs> Listen, if anybody deserves to have fun, it's you. How many unsolicited dick pics do you get, though? Probably a lot, right? So you know what? I don't get the Snapchat. Snapchat is ridiculous. I don't know why. Some of these dudes, the things they send me, I do not understand. You know, like, what the fuck are they thinking? But um, I don't know. Snapchat is really the only place I get any kind of pictures like that. My Instagram is actually, people are, are pretty cool. Like, I'll get some dumb remarks here and there. But they're actually pretty chill, and I appreciate that. All right, good, good. Well, listen, uh, Pearl, you have an amazing story. You're a champion at life. You, you've over a lot of a lot of girls your age, people your age. They would have been like my parents, were both drug addicts. They'd be on the corner somewhere. They would. You, have, you had every reason in life to fail, and you said fuck that, and you succeeded. And because of that, I look up to you so much. I will always cheer for you, and I will always be a fan of yours. Oh, thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Thank you. It's true. So where can people find you? At Pearl Gonzalez. I'm on all social media platforms. Hit me up. Um, and where else? No, that's pretty much it. At Pearl Gonzalez. And when's your next fight? I'm hoping. Uh, be f I'd like to get one more in before the end of the year. So uh, we'll see. We'll see where that, that is. And hopefully December time frame would be ideal. But I'm not injured. I'm back in training. I'm ready to roll. Well, thank you, Pearl. And good luck with everything. Well, you look great. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Take care. All right. That was Pearl Ooh. Gonzalez. You know, I'm looking at one of her videos right here on 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 uh, the on the gram. In the gram, yeah. And the guy in the background, what's that guy's name? We've had him on the podcast. What's Elias. This? He's, Elias. He's a ring boy. He's a, a a ring boy now. Is that what he's doing now? Yeah, no. I was like, if this is an Invicta weigh-in, what the fuck? I know yeah, he's no, got they have a, hair, no, they have a one. They no, they have a ring, no, they have a ring car boy now. Oh, good for him. Well, he's so <laughs> handsome anyway. Isn't he like a cover model for romance novels yeah, and shit? Yeah. And, yeah, so is he not fighting anymore? He's done? No, he's still fighting. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was supposed to fight Shoeface this week, but Shoeface pulled out. Yeah, um, I was going to say, because he's still in shape, shit. But, I mean, I just I saw him in the background, and I'm like, all right, now I lost my boat. But, but what do you think? But uh, I, 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 I like Pearl. She seems like a cool chick, too. No, she seems super cool, man. She's super cool, and... You know, listen, she's fought through adversity. That's it. When you come through that kind of adversity, I imagine UFC just seems so much easier. Yeah. You and you're like, listen, I've seen far worse than this. At least I'm fighting just one person tonight. It's amazing. You know? So, I mean, that's, the you know, good for her, man. Listen, and like you said, you were right at the end when you say things like that. Like, you have every reason to, to give up. You know, to say, fuck it, life de dealt me the shittiest fucking hand. And, and that's it. You have to respect me. We're like, no, because in life you do. You got to play the cards you dealt. That's why I tell all the kids in practice. They're always like, my knee hurts or this. I have a cold or he's bigger than me. I go, listen, kids, you're going to have 30 reasons, excuses of why you can lose. Yeah. And, and you know what? They're probably valid, a lot of them. But that's not. It's still, you have to reason why you're going to win. Yeah. That's what you have to focus on. Yeah. Anybody, uh, comics, oh, well, I don't have a good agent, I don't have a good manager, or this or that, or no or, one books me, or uh, I'm, I'm a single white male now. It, there's all kinds of shit that you could fucking say. Yeah. But it's why I'm going to be the best I can be, why right. I'm going to succeed. Or they walk into the room and they're like, oh, there's only a few people here. Well, I guess then you're not a big draw. You That's need to give these the people a great show. That's the worst. That's the worst. I hate it when comics sandbag. It's like, oh, were you going to do different material? Because it's a smaller crowd. I've seen you do the same jokes every night for the last three years. Just fucking do the jokes, bro. No, no, let's take it out of the people who, sh who showed up. Let, let's, let's, yes. let's punish them. They it, showed exactly. up. They showed up. I mean, it's like, I'm sorry, you're not a draw and I'm not a draw, but let's make this a draw. Let's make them, because that's the thing. We make the decision about how they're going to leave that show. They're either going to leave there going, oh, man, there's only a couple of us there, but it's still a great show. So many times. Or I they're going to leave going, oh, it fucking sucks. We were the only people there. And that the time, choice is Most of the time, I sell more tickets. Oh, I sell more T-shirts and CDs afterwards on lower on lighter attendance yeah on smaller shows because they felt like they had a better experience right you know they got a better experience it was more personal when I saw Chappelle 
Whenever I see Dave Chappelle, like my friend was going to see Chappelle last night with Lauren Hill at the Greek Theater. I'm oh, like, right, that show, yeah. I don't want to see him at the Greek Theater. I, I like seeing him at, at the fucking, when there's 15 people. Right. That, that's he, the best right, show. Right, he's just sneaking in to work on that's some stuff. That's the best show you're going to see. Yeah. That's, the, that's You're going to see a great show then. When it's 500 people, it's just like, people are going to be laughing at his stupid, what's up, y'all? You mean 5,000 or 10,000? Five, five, yeah, yeah, 50, whatever it is. People are going to be laughing at I think bullshit. the Greek is somewhere around 10,000. It was something. something. I, heard, I heard Lauren Hill was, was, it was crazy. Greek theater is a great theater, but it's so hard to get to. Yeah, oh yeah. It's hard to get in and out of, like damn near impossible, especially if you use rideshare. Oh, forget it. Listen, people, my life has gotten so much better, so much better since I started using the Calm Bomb. Yes, people, the Calm Bomb is a patented cannabis oil bath bomb that through a proprietary formula will allow the CBD to be better absorbed by the skin, offering maximum relief to people with chronic pain and anxiety. If you have anxiety, if you have pain, this is the way to go. Okay, you go in your bath, you put the bomb in, boom! You feel so much better. It is uh, made by those four and suffering from chronic pain. And for that reason, we're taking relaxation to the next level with the newest product, Calm Bombs, CBD bath bombs made with all natural ingredients. Yes, you read that right. It's made for with, uh, it's 100% vegan, organic, cruelty-free bath bombs made in Boston. That's what I'm talking about. Boston people, the Celtics, the, the Patriots, the, uh, Red the Red Sox. Yes, Bruins. Boston, USA with premium ingredients. And I'm telling you, and it's got these ingredients that uh, allow the pores to open for maximum CBD absorption. I'm telling you, check it out. It's made in Boston, and Calm Bomb is the way to go. Calm Bomb. Also, people, the bath bomb featured at Calm Bomb allow you to care for yourself while supporting others. Though self-care is often seen as a luxury that benefits you, in this case, you are truly helping others. With $5 from each box going directly to families in need. All right, so you feel better, your pores feel better, you're relaxed, and someone else is feeling better. How great is that? The, the Calm Bomb sister, mombomb.org, helps moms and their families by providing those going through a tough time with a choice of one of four services, meal delivery, housekeeping, laundry, or childcare. Yes, people, how cool is that? It's a revolutionary formula, ensures the CBD is fully absorbed, and every box sold helps struggling moms by donating $5 to charity. Calm Bomb is now searching for crowdfunding partners. The donations are inexpensive and the rewards are long lasting. And now, for a limited time, my listeners can get Calm Bombs at a huge discount by going to their website at www.buybombshelpmoms.com and clicking our Indiegogo page. So check it out. Uh, that's Buy Bombs Helps Moms. That's Buy Bombs Help Moms.com. All right, so listen, if you're on Amazon.com and you shop off Amazon, which I'm sure you do, go to adamhunter.com first, click on my banner, and then get whatever you want. Uh, I will be, uh, let's do me first. I'll be at the Carlson Comedy Club uh, tomorrow night uh, and Friday night with Jeremy Piven in Rochester, New York. Then I'll be at Stars and Stripes uh, Bar in downtown Upland, September 27th. Laugh Lines in Vancouver, September 28th, 29th. Funny Bone in Des Moines, October 4th to the 8th. Uh, I will be at the Diamond Joe Casino in Dubuque, uh, Iowa, October 10th. Cedar Rapids, uh, October 12th. Funny Bone in Des Moines, October 13th. Funny Bone in Omaha, October 14th. And the Kansas City Improv, October 15th. Uh, then I will be in Miami, Oklahoma at the Looney Saloon. Miami, Oklahoma, that's uh, October 27th and 26th. And then, uh, yeah, that's where I'll be. Greg, what do you got coming up? I'm actually going to be at the Ha Ha Cafe this Saturday night for the Late Show for my Down and Dirty Show. So come out and join me if you're in Los Angeles. Then I'm actually going to be taking a little break from the road because I have a series I'm going to be shooting uh, coming up nice. uh, for Amazon called Upload. Congratulations. And so I'll be working on that. And there's, I have a myriad of other projects. So I'm taking a little break until December uh, from the road. I'm going to be around working on stuff here in Los Angeles. Good for you. So, Wean Dog, what do you got? Go over to Twitter, Instagram, follow me at the Wean Dog for all your Wean Dog news, updates, notifications, <laughs> all um, kinds of stuff. Uh, condom slip off stories. Yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. The no sex having Wean Dog <laughs> truth. <laughs> and also, yeah, go to my Twitter at the Greg Wilson and do me a favor and just retweet my top pin tweet. Give Greg a damn special. I'm trying to get me one of them Netflix specials. Yeah. So so uh, awesome. thank you guys so much and take care and have a great week. Trap, sauce, and trap, don't
Tuni sons to hook chum dorpo lan. Tada stolt and dorpo da moro tan.